So this talk is about the combined sign version of the first derivative test, which is how it's usually stated. Now, in a previous video, I did the one-sided versions of the first derivative test, which hopefully you see up here. You can go back and watch that to understand the logic. Now, these dotted things are actually sort of optional, so you can sort of ignore them for now. Okay, I'm just going to consider a case of strict equality, sorry, strict inequality. So I want input equal to zero and strict local maximum. Okay, now you see here from the above that that for the first derivative test on the left side we made some assumptions and for the first derivative test on the right side we made some assumptions. So now we want to sort of combine those assumptions. So what should be the assumption for f at c? If you want to do the two-sided thing, f should be? f should be what? I don't get it. Well, you have to combine these assumptions, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what should be the combined assumption? Zero. What's zero? No, no, just this part, the blue ink part. I want to say both of these are true. So what, what's the way of saying both these conditions are true? So F is continuous. Continuous at C. Yeah. And differentiable on the left and right of C. Okay, by the way, what am I assuming about the derivative of F at C? Nothing. I'm not assuming anything about whether F is differentiable at C. Okay. I'm assuming, however, that f is differentiable on the immediate left and the immediate right of c. Okay, so let's make cases for f prime, the sign of f prime on the left and right. And I'm, I'll assume f prime on the left and right have clear cut signs, and I'll come to that later. So let's say you have positive and negative. So you see the lines clearly positive and negative. What can you say about f at c? Well, f prime x is positive on the left of c, then what does that mean? f has a strict local max from the left. f prime x is negative on the right of c, what does that mean? f has a strict local max from right. From the right. So what are, when you combine those, what do you get? Local max. Strict local max, two-sided, right? So by the way, if I don't write anything, I mean two-sided. So you have strict local max. Okay, let's put negative, positive. Okay, what can you say now about f at c? f prime x less than 0 on the left of c. Oh, by the way, I didn't say it this time, but, but where are you using continuity? You're using continuity to say, to sort of get these conclusions on the one side. I'll explain with this one. So, f prime x is less than 0 on the left of c. Less than 0 on the left of c. F has a strict local minimum from the left. Well, how do we reason that? Just remind you, negative derivative means decreasing, left continuous means you can extend the decreasing behavior to the point and therefore you get strict local minimum from the left. Positive behavior means uh, positive derivative. So positive derivative means increasing and because it's right continuous, you can extend the increasing behavior to the point and therefore you get strict local uh, min from the right. So overall, what do you get? Straight over min. Two-sided, right? Okay, uh, let's do the other two cases. So what are the other two cases? What what two cases have we not yet considered? Pause, Sign pause, and next active method. What will happen if it's plus plus and what will happen if it's minus minus? Well, you won't get either of these. What will happen if it's plus plus? It's increasing on the immediate left and left continuous. So it's a strict local max from the left, but it's a strict local minimum from the right. So actually it's sort of neither. And it's actually a point of increase. So the function is increasing through the point. After I finish writing this down, I make pictures to illustrate. Okay, minus minus, yeah. local min from the left, local max from the right, so it's sort of neither. So it's decreasing through the point. Okay, 
Uh, you can also make non-strict versions of these. It's a little trickier, so I'm not talking about that right now. Okay, uh, but if you allow equal to zero or in here, you can potentially lose the strictness on these two. Okay, now I want to do a couple more things. So I want to make pictures first of all of these various two-sided situations. So increasing on the immediate left, decreasing on the immediate right, you could have a situation like this and you do get a strict local max, right? So that was as that sort of the first situation. You could also have a picture where it's not differentiable at the point, right, like that, okay? Uh, decreasing on the immediate left, so negative derivative, then positive. Uh, on the right, so you could have uh, upward sloping, like not upward, but concave up type picture like that, or you could have picture like that, right? Uh, so this is strict local max, this is strict local min. Increasing on the left, increasing on the right, and you could have something like that, or you could have. Uh, flattens out and then goes up again. Uh, decreasing, you could again have something like that. Decreasing, then decreasing. You could have something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so strict local max, strict local min and the neither cases. Okay. Uh, so, one more quick remark I want to make. That is, that the, the way this test is typically used is we typically use this test at a critical point. So the point C to which to which we apply this test is typically a critical point for the function, which means at the point either the derivative is zero or or what? At a critical, doesn't exist. The derivative is either zero or doesn't exist. But but the test actually sort of you don't need to assume it's a critical point for you to use the test. If you use the test, if the derivative is positive on the left, negative on the right, you can conclude it's a strict local max, it all sort of automatically becomes a critical point. So if you are in these two cases, if you are in the first case or, or the second case, then you don't have to separately check that it's a critical point if you haven't already checked. So you don't need it to be a critical point to state the test, though it's usually applied at critical points because things which aren't critical points anyway sort of aren't going to be candidates for local maximum. Okay.